Greetings and salutations. Welcome to the Idaho Ren Fair YouTube page. We have an extremely exciting video for you today. We're all about etiquette, which is a dying art as we all know. Plus, it has changed so much from medieval times to uh, all the um, Egyptian times, stuff like that, and depending on where you're at. So specifically, we have our wonderful queen, Denise, who is going to be talking specifically about Renaissance era etiquette and how at our fair, we as cast kind of approach and treat our royalty. So if you would like to play along when you come and visit, this is going to be the most key video of your Ren Fair experience. Turning to Denise. Hello. I'm Denise. Uh, usually um, I'm in the witch's court, but today I am going to be your lady in wait. Well, not lady. She's actually a, a, a duchess. Beatrice Dieste, as indicated by the bozo, the gold, all the regalia. And um, there was many rules about how you, enc you encountered and interacted with nobility and people of lower classes. Um... Were they specific for women and men, or is it a general, like everyone does the same thing? There are some things that are general, as in how we address our our majesties and our um, ladies and lords, but there's also some specific things to women and men. First thing is um, how we address our nobility. Um, so ladies and uh, you know landed gentry, they are your lady, your lord. Would you explain what landed gentry means? That means someone who is higher up. They don't necessarily have a title, but they do have land and people that work that land. So would so, it be like a merchant or... Close to merchant, but just a little bit above. A merchant who has done well by gaining favor of the king. Because the king can grant and take away land and uh, titles. They've done it really well. We always uh, reference Ever After. She was a baroness. She was stripped of her title, which is the king's prerogative, especially if you lie to them. <laughs> so it's your lady, your lord, my lady, my lord. And usually the affection, affectionation of saying my is someone who is closer, someone who is actually in the household. So if you are just a stranger walking by and you're like, you see... And it's a, t it's a nod to a lady or a lord. My lady. My lord. Okay. So it's a little bit stronger. Um, Kat, our amazing director, is also going to be some wonderful examples. Hi, guys. Because we're going to get into the more important stuff on how you address the nobles. As in the king, the queen, the princesses. Okay. And theirs are your majesty. And it's your. Now, if you were, say, a lady in waiting, it would be my majesty. Okay. Because of the closeness of... Yes. Yes. Um, sometimes landed gentry can go with your grace, but your grace is usually reserved for the papacy or, uh, or uh, cardinals, people of, of higher ranking in the church is your grace. So let me ask this real quick. If most of the nobility at the time was interbreeding anyways, cousins to cousins and stuff like that, so would they not all basically be saying your majesty or my majesty or, or something like that? Because they're all technically family, right? Uh, yes, but your majesty is rega rega um, relegated to the king and the queen, the top. So you can be sub princesses, and you know, and you can even for like my princess, is or my prince, those are also affectionate, or your prince, your your princess, when you're addressing them, you would never address the king as oh hi Jeff, <laughs> <laughs> right. hi Dimitri, <laughs> oh how's it going Napolitan? No, not unless you're a pirate or. I, unless person. you really wanted to get your head cut Or the off. gesture. Of course, the gesture not a talks. Right, because <laughs> the gesture's a fool. Yes. And he's allowed to make a fool of himself. 
So now we are going to demonstrate the bow. Now, as I said before, when, it, when you're encountering gentry, as in lords and ladies, it's a head nod. And when lords and ladies are passing each other, it's a head nod. It's like, They're acknowledging each other's presence. Yes, because we're not below people. We're, we're on equal standing. So, hello. It's that little polite head nod and a, a slight bow to the knees. A very slight bend subtle knees. dip. It's a very, very subtle dip. Now, when you are actually addressing the queen, you would bow. Now, we have a unique, this one has been perfected amongst the Rennies <laughs> as in a proper bow because in true etiquette fashion, you cannot leave the bow until your king or queen releases you. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay in it. So, so for that, it's, I don't know if you can see my feet, I'm, ho I'm hoping. Um, what you wanna do is just kind of put your, your forward foot, the heel against your toes of your back foot, and just kind of rest your knee against your calf. And then it's a lot easier to just kind of stay there because you're not like depending on one leg or the other, you're kind of both your legs are supporting each other. So you can stay in like this for a while. Yes. And so, and this is where the, the sexes kind of change a little bit. So release. <laughs> the, when a woman, because she's got her dress and she goes into that bow. The dress goes out. Yep. Now, when a man will do that bow, it's usually a... Or he will take off his hat. Which, we're going to ask Tyson to come show yes. that one. Okay. So, as they shown, it's a bow. Because of the headgear back in the day, they would need to wear this so that they could keep the lice and the other critters at bay. Yes. They, they did and not they bathe not. on a daily basis. The hygiene was different. So, hat on, see the queen, hat off and pointing back so that the lice and the other varmints don't go to the royalty. Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> and I would say release because you would stay in that bow right. until I would Forever. Release. I would stay here <laughs> forever. <laughs> um, true story, when I first played the queen and I did not know as much etiquette, I, we had some wonderful visiting lord and lady, and they were in full repose, and I was like, <laughs> and they're like, <coughs> I'm like, oh, oh, release. <laughs> and if you have a cheeky king or queen, they love to play with that, and will keep you in a bow longer if, if they feel inclined. The other half of this is you never turn your back on the king and the queen. So what do you do when you want to leave? Bow low and walk backwards. Yes, till you're a, of a good enough distance that you can turn around and go. Which usually equates to anywhere between five and 10 feet, depending on where your bow or curtsy starts. If you're this close, you're going to just take a few steps and then turn and go. So you're about, you know, five to eight feet apart. But if you're starting, you know, from back here, I might just take a side step and a back step and then I can turn and go. Yes. Now, can the queen or the king call you back if they feel slighted? Oh, yes. Okay. They would say return. <laughs> and then Sorry, you Majesty. would return and immediately go into that bow because you have already, you know you're in trouble. I've already messed up. Like, already. How can I fix this? And uh, <laughs> much like Japanese etiquette, the lower you bow, the more you are below them. So um, I was taught this in a culture class that you bow low to your elders. <laughs> And so. The funniest ones we've witnessed is when we have some of our more silly actors and actresses. Mostly the actors, I found. Mostly mm -hmm. it's our guys. That when they feel the need to be below, they will like flop on the ground. And it's kind of really funny because it's like, oh my gosh, are you okay? Yes. And they're just like, oh my god, your majesty. Yeah, they <laughs> will go down. And <laughs> We have lots of comedians that love to do that, yeah. and, and it's it's entertaining. And even if you are encountered um, a, a rogue noble, 
as, as one that is maybe not part of the court, but is a visiting person, like as in another patron addressed like a king or queen, and you do the proper bow to them, um, that, that really increases their fair enjoyment because you are acknowledging that they are noble. And, um, and most of the time they will reciprocate if they have no idea what you're doing. Um, they'll get shy or they'll go, <laughs> wonderful to do for the littles. The little children. The littles the little are so fun to do that with. My they princess. get so excited. And they, yeah, it, you, are, you are creating a memory. Now, just to throw this out there, since we were talking about the men who throw themselves on the ground, <laughs> last year I did that to our poor queen and king as my character, Gottlieb, and I scared the horse that they were riding on. Yep. So definitely be tactful about when you do it, if you are going to be funny, if they are in the middle of something or yeah. riding a horse, don't don't throw yourself at their feet. It's not safe for maybe, anyone. Maybe not while they're processing, but like any other time that they're just kind of walking around in a coupleage, then it's probably safe to be a little silly. Yes. And encountering someone, uh, we've had the Pope on occasion, uh, Rodrigo Borgia and uh, his son Cesare. These... Um, these are people of the church, and at this time in the Renaissance, that they are on the same level, if not higher than nobility. So your addressing to them would be similar to a king or queen. You would bow. In many res many um, respects, then the Pope would hold out his ring, and you would kiss it. That is acknowledging that he is the Pope. And um, yeah, so that's why um, some, some gentries wanted to be Pope more than they wanted to be King because the Pope had more power at that time. So that's another fun interaction. Interesting historical note for the period we're doing. If you watch the video about the beginning of the Italian Wars, you know the reason the Italian War started was because Alfonso didn't pay his taxes to the Pope. Yeah. And so the Pope gave Alfonso's land to Charles, the Emperor of France. And that's what started all of that. So the Pope in 1494 specifically is a very powerful figure right there with kings, queens, and emperors. Yes, yep. and that's actually also why when the Pope is crowned the Pope, he wears that, we call it a ridiculous metal hat, but it has three <laughs> crowns on it to signify the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, but also to signify that he is above yeah. everyone. Andrew, everyone, <laughs> including the Emperor. Well, I just learned something new today. <laughs> the Pope. So, okay. So now we're going to go into basically promenading on how you're going to walk with your lady. So Kat's going to demonstrate my man. Women always, especially in, no, in, in nobility, the women were always on the right. The man would hold out his hand. So you would place it on top of the hand, uh, thumb, tucked, yeah, tucked, yeah, because it would actually be considered vulgar to if the out. man put the hand, the thumb out, or like, or this. even this, this, <laughs> this, this is like, yeah, <laughs> this is, this is, this is big time, no, no, <laughs> no, 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 and you can be scandalous if you want to start a scandal, you can do that. But and then, what does it mean? Like why? It's you're in a relationship. It so, means you're uh, yeah. Kind of, yeah yeah. In so relationship. so this means you're you're having an intimate relationship. Would the king and the queen do that? Because I mean they're obviously married. For the sake of propriety, no. 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 That is relegated relegated to it's that's why it's so pointed out because it's a no no. So if you see somebody doing it, you know they're not. <laughs> not following the rules. No, no. So, and then you would just proceed to walk. And the man leads the woman. So, yeah. Let me lead you, oh, darling, this sorry, way. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> and then back around. And, back around. and if you were going to be together and bowing, it's just... So... So that the the promenade, and you'll and you'll see that when our our nobility is not on horseback and is promenading together, and that 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 goes for any male female coupling coupling, 
Um, most nobles are also not required, or not required, they are required to have an escort. Mm -hmm. You cannot leave your encampment without a guard. Yep. If it's two women processing together, sometimes they will hold each other's arms, and especially if they're like close confidants, they might whisper as they walk and just we have our si we're having our private conversation while we walk. Um, if they are not close friends, they may just walk side by side and avoid the hand holding. Yes. <laughs> um, I know our princesses go back and forth. Sometimes they will hold arms. Sometimes they will just walk side by side and still chat with each other. But we do have, there, there are other ladies of the court or gentlemen of the court that as they walk, they may just walk side by side. And it just depends on station. Yes, because if you're, say, a lady in waiting and your queen, she will have her guard next to her because mm -hmm. the guard's gotta be ready. Yep. He's gotta be ready. And then you would be a pace behind her. Yep, just right behind. So that you can be there to, a lady in waiting would be there to like hold her basket or her coin purse so that if the queen wanted to purchase anything, Ooh. then the lady would give would have the money to give her and then she would carry the item so that their majesty didn't have to. So if you are, if it's you and your lady in waiting and the guard, is the guard extending his hand or is he walking just next to you. Normally he's walking next to you. The, the only person that should should be touching the queen is the king. So, um, you know, her son is possible if she ha if she has a prince. But yeah. the only man that should be touching the queen is the king. So the guard would be nearby. And that also frees his hands up for his weapons. Because, you know, uh, assassinations were a thing. And they're really popular. And... Although we're in Italy and our, our major mode of, of assassination was poison, <laughs> people still sliced and diced. Um, uh, and the poison yeah. is why uh, food testing came into play. Exactly. So. Yeah, and the bezoar, which is a fun bit of history. But uh, yeah, as they say, uh, Italian women kept their, men's because ev their men because every morning they gave them a slow poison. And every night, they gave him the antidote. So the <laughs> husband who didn't come home at night had a very bad night. One question for me that mm -hmm. I just thought of. So we did a lot of, like, nobility. Do the peasants basically do the exact same thing? Should they ever encounter royalty? If they ever encounter royalty, it's a lot of bowing. It's a lot of... And for them, it's a just lot of low bowing. Gotcha. Because they're the bottom of the totem pole. They don't have to bow to each other. Yeah. But... In, in the regards of like hierarchy, if you have a landed gentry, which is like our merchant cat class, they would be bound to them because they're basically working for them. Yeah. Gotcha. So it's just an affectation. And very similar to like, you know, hello. Yeah. It's kind of a, they would like, yeah, a, a sense of gesture. And here's the fun, here's a little fun fact about the handshake and the, in the, the initiation of the handshake. If you were shaking hands, you couldn't grab your sword. Yep. It is a symbol of trust. Yep. Also, for a lot of men, they would grab arms. That is so they could make sure that there was not a dagger up the sleeve. Yes. So answer this question. So on mm -hmm. the promenade, why is it that the king and the queen aren't leading the promenade? Safety. Safety. Horses. Okay. Safety from the horses? Both. <laughs> One, safety, because if somebody is going to try, try to attack the king and queen, they've got a lot of folks to get to, to get <laughs> to the king and queen. It's shielding. Mm -hmm. um, secondly, a lot of times in these promenades, there are horses. Yep. And we put the horses in there in the front, aren't they not? Or they're in the back? Um, they were in the back. Okay. So, so in the, yeah. the horses ride in the back with the royalty uh, for two purposes. One because the king and queen are elevated and assassinations, they've got to come through the crowd. Um, but two, because if the horses decide they've got to go, nobody wants to walk through that. <laughs> yeah, so. and in the regard of, and I think in some promenades where the horses are ahead, all the people ahead are there to kick it out of the way. Kick it out. Yep. Get rid of it. Or as Sir Walter Raleigh did, put that, wonderful cloak of his down so the queen may walk across it. 
<laughs> so it's not just a puddle of water that the yeah, it could be a puddle. Of no, it could be a puddle of other things too. Yeah, remember, we didn't have uh, um, you know centralized plumbing. Centralized plumbing. So a lot of them just uh, went into a bucket and out the window. Yeah, plumbing was starting to be developed during the Renaissance, but it hadn't been fully fledged yet. So. Okay. So. And so if you're, you are a peasant or even as just a patron and you see the king and queen, just bow. Okay, well, that's fantastic. Again, questions or concerns or comments or whatever you have, please make sure you post them so that we can go ahead and go from there. We will definitely eventually get to either the tea party or the feast, feast depending on which one you would like to see first. We know we're going to do them, but this is the power of the viewers. If you would like to see one or the other, comment yes. feast or tea. Yes. That way we can kind of go ahead as we get closer to being able to do it to know which one we should do first. So this has been the Idaho Renaissance Fair, and we appreciate you coming and watching. We hope your history is as fun as our history, and we will catch you on the next one. Huzzah! Huzzah!